ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mano Marx and Vicky and Allen. Docker Con! Yeah. You having a good time? Yeah. Everyone? Yeah! All right, so this is the last uh, closing keynote for the conference. And so I think it's a great time for us to take a, just a short minute to thank all the speakers who have made this such a wonderful event. Thank you all very much. And of course, thank you, everyone in this room and everyone watching online. Docker would not be where it is today without all of you guys. And in the spirit of DockerCon and this age of social media, let's all grab our phones and take one last Docker selfie. OK. Whoops, selfie. All right, so on the count of, count of three, let's all name our favorite Docker feature, all right? One, two, three. Security. Isolated containers and built-in orchestration. <laughs> All right, perfect. All right. Every DockerCon, we expand the bounds of what Docker can do. And every DockerCon, we see hundreds, thousands of amazing apps that people in the community, people in the ecosystem have built. And yet, every DockerCon, a couple stand out as truly pushing the bounds themselves of what Docker can do. This year, we'll be highlighting two apps in this year's Cool Hacks keynote. And we're fortunate enough that both of these apps were developed by Docker captains, a group of people outside of Docker that we recognize for their technical ability and their contributions to the community. Our first hack is probably familiar to most of you who've attended local meetups or any of the workshops that were given at this conference. They put the play in Playground. Please rec welcome two-time winners of the Cool Hacks Award, Marcos and Jonathan from Mantica. So hi, everyone. I'm Jonathan. Hi, DockerCon. Marcos. So today, we are here to talk about a cool project that we've been working on for the last five months. Um, it actually all started with Marcos and I traveling to Berlin to assist to the Distributed Systems Summit. So we were there, and as part of the Captain program, um, Jerome gave a talk about how we can give his orchestration workshop. This is very cool whenever we go to like, um, conferences or meetups, etc. Now, one thing that we observed with Marcos is that usually it's really hard for users that assist to get started. They need to install. We actually ask them to install specific version of Docker Engine, of Docker Compose, of Docker uh, Machine. And it takes time for, this, for them. They need to download it. And usually, the internet connection is not as good. Also, we ask them to install all kind of, uh, to download, sorry, or pull all kind of images, right? It's what you do. And during conferences, internet is usually a big problem. So it takes time again. And then, OK, so maybe one thing that they can do is to actually use the cloud, like AWS or Azure or whatever. But then, they need to create their accounts, they need to configure their accounts, and they need to have credits. And we all run out of credits. Mm -hmm. So then we thought about it for a long time, and we, we said, OK, we need to do something. We need to hack on something during these two days and come up with something that will help them. And this is basically what we work on. And the good thing is that since we were at the summit, uh, we had access to all these great developers that could help us with all the different questions that we had. So after the two days, 
we managed to come up with something. And Marcos, do you want to demo it? OK, that's enough, Jonas. Let me demo it. <laughs> so playwithdocker.com, uh, for those who don't know it, it's just we know that Docker is available in almost uh, all the platforms. We have it on all the cloud providers. We have it on Mac, Windows, Linux. That's amazing. But uh, we needed to go a bit further, and uh, we did it for the web. So Docker on the web, that sounds a bit crazy. So if you go to playwithdocker.com, you're going to be presented with an interface similar like this one. So you can come and create an instance. And as you can see, in one second, I, shall have, I, I have a terminal, and I can actually do Docker version. And I have the latest uh, community edition installed here. So I can try uh, all the things that I, that I want. And uh, of course, you also have the latest uh, dev version. So you can try multi-stage builds and all the cool new uh, Docker features. But um, let's show you. Let's try to do something better. Let's uh, try to do, uh, run a container, for example. So I'm going to do Docker run. Hello world. And as you can see, as we are running in a cloud plat uh, provider, this is like super fast. Uh, it just takes a second to download the image, and that's it. Another amazing feature that uh, Docker Play with Docker has is that you can actually share your session with someone else. So if you copy the, this URL and you uh, share it with someone, you have this uh, another browser. And if you type something, you can see that the session gets replicated. So you can actually assist, assist someone that has a problem remotely, and you can both you know, collaborate and uh, found your, basically the solution for your problem. So let's close this tab. And uh, let's try to do something a little bit more complex. So uh, some of you might have problems, for instance, or difficulties trying to run Swarm in your platform. Why? Because in Docker for Mac, it's not that easy. In Docker for Windows, it's also very difficult. You either need to start install VirtualBox or VMware or, or some other tools. But uh, I just like to hack with it and uh, get started immediately. So I'm going to create another instance in Play with Docker. And I, can, I should be able to do Docker Swarm in it. And I can set up the advertise address, ETH0. And as you can see, my node has just become a Swarm manager. So I should be able to copy this uh, token. I'm going to strip the spaces here. And then if I go to the second node, I'm going to just paste it. And as you can see, we have a two-node Swarm in a web session. That's pretty cool, right? Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that you can do is that you can expand your terminal. So that's another cool thing. So <laughs> yeah. So if I do Docker node less, you, you can see that I have two nodes. And I can deploy my services. I can try stacks. I can pretty much do everything I need with Swarm. But I know that you must be think, thinking, OK, uh, play with Docker is cool. but. I, the web interface, I'm more like a DevOps guy or a SysOps guy. So I like the terminal. I like to, you know, to, to write scripts to uh, do stuff with this. So one thing that we added is if you actually copy the URL that you have in Play with Docker and you export it as a variable, like here, you can do Docker machine create. Uh, yes, guys, this is going to happen. And, and you specify the Play with Docker driver, which is a PWD, and you create a node. and Wow. You can see that my wow. terminal that's creates really cool. a debug. <laughs> wait, wait, is, that's, not, that's not all. You can do, of course, of course, I know that you're thinking about this. So you can do Docker machine M node one. So basically, I'm pointing my doc, Docker CLI to talk to play with Docker, and I can do Docker run. Let's try to do something interesting. I'm going to try to run an Nginx because I know that you like running web apps. So you must be thinking, OK, but how am I, am I going to access this uh, service that I created? Because it's a web-based application. So when Play with Docker finishes launching the service, you can see a small badge here at the top that tells you which ports Play with Docker is exposing, either for standalone containers or for Swarm services. And if you click it, we have an Nginx running. You can access, access it really fast. Nice, nice. And uh, to close this presentation, I'm going to try to do something, something difficult. So maybe the demo gods will be with us. So, something so crazy, right? Something, something crazy. crazy. Let's try to do this. So I'm going to try to run UCP in Play with Docker. UCP is uh, one of the components of the Docker Enterprise Edition. So I'm just uh, basically running the uh, installation script that you can find in the official Docker documentation. Nothing new here. So yeah, but wait. What, what is UCP then? I, I don't really understand. Oh, sorry. So UCP basically. It's uh, one of the Docker uh, data center product, products mm -hmm. that allows you to see uh, a web uh, interface of your engine, of the, the whole swarm. You can deploy services. It's pretty cool. I mean, it was presented this morning 
you got uh, the other presentation, you know, when. Uh, oh, okay. But uh, we're trying to run it in uh, Play with Docker, and as you can see, it's starting in less than 30 seconds. So it was only 20 seconds, and I have my UCP running. So if everything goes okay, I should be able to click this uh, link, and if I refresh, no, no, not yet, not yet. I get an error, and now I got it. Now I got it. <laughs> so let me try to log in to UCP. Uh, so my credentials are OK. As you can see, it's running the same first instance. that I, I have my two nodes. Everything is in place. I have my services. And to finish this presentation and close your fingers, I'm going to copy a stack, uh, basically a stack file. And I'm going to try to deploy it in UCP in Play with Docker so you can believe me in what I'm saying. As you can see, UCP is deploying my services. I hit done, and in a normal work workflow, you should click in, on your service. Here, you can see that uh, as everything is running UCP, services are uh, starting up, as you can see, are, are coming up. So if I go to my voting application, and if I go to the latest uh, ingress port, my application wow. is running. <laughs> and you can actually see that it's load balancing my contain containers as you would expect in your production cluster. Thank you. Wow, that, that was a good, very good demo. <laughs> so, so, so what is Play with Docker then? Play with Docker is the Docker playground. So if you guys are familiar with uh, the Go playground, it would be basically the same, but for Docker. What you can do with Play with Docker, we saw a few things already. You can provision machines or insta uh, instances Im immediately. Uh, you can have debugging, uh, interactive debugging sessions. Zero setup time, which is what we wanted in the first place. You get super fast internet connection, so downloading, uh, pulling images from, from the registry is super fast. You get, uh, so you guys, I, I guess you, you saw the birthday tutorials uh, like a few months ago. Uh, those are actually powered by Play with Docker behind the scenes. So you can write these tutorials. And we are, that, we are adding in the future uh, two very nice features. One is templated sessions, which means that you can create a session and with one single click, get a whole uh, application up and running. It could, it could be like a, a swarm with all sorts of containers running there. So it, could, it should be even faster for you to start learning something. And a collaborative file editor, which means that you can up upload files to the instances and edit them collabor collaboratively. That's a hard word. Yeah, uh, uh, with, with whoever you are debugging with or playing with. But how this works behind the scenes, then? So right now, Play with Docker is uh, deployed on AWS. And whenever you type playwithdocker.com, you end up in an elastic load balancer on AWS. Now, this Elastic Load Balancer will choose one of the hosts behind the scenes. These hosts are actually Docker Swarms. And in this Docker Swarm, we have a container running, which is the Play, uh, the play with Docker daemon. And the first thing that it does, it, of course, serves the applications. But the second thing is uh, it acts as a DNS and as a proxy. This is so we can route your request to the uh, right instance. Whenever you guys create a session, what we do is we create an, an overlay network in this uh, swarm. And whenever you guys create an instance, what we do is we create a Docker in Docker container inside this network. So basically, every session is totally isolated from, from any other session. So your work is isolated from other people. OK, just to close this presentation, uh, a few facts about Play with Docker. It has been running since December uh, last year. It has been selected, as many of, of you have experienced, as a default platform for training Docker and also for the last birthday, which was pretty cool. Uh, we managed to run around 3,500 containers per node, which I believe is a new record, if, if, uh, Docker in Docker containers at least. Uh, we have around 1,000 people using it per week. And the tutorials uh, site has more than 30 tutorials, and uh, we are looking forward to have more. So if you want to bring some love into this project, please contribute. You don't need to know how to code. It's just markdown. Everything is super easy. And uh, as a last but not less thing, uh, we not only managed to do Docker in Docker, which is something that Jerome did a long time ago, but we also managed to do Swarm in Swarm. But that is really cool. But now I ask the audience, and I give you a challenge. Maybe we can run Play with Docker and Play with Docker. 
I believe it's possible. So if someone feels like hacking, we would love to hear about it. As a last testimonial, we heard that Play with Docker is being used inside Docker to train new people and to bring, in, bring them up to date. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Marcos and Jonathan. That was awesome. Our next Docker captain comes to us from ADP in Peterborough, UK, and is a very active member of the Docker community, providing lots of different learning materials as well as different workshops. Today, he's going to show us how his cool hack brings even more modularity and functionality onto Docker Swarm. Please welcome Alex Ellis. Hi, everyone. I want to talk to you about my core hack called Functions as a Service, or FAS. Now, it's a framework for building serverless applications with the power of Docker. But before we get into that, we need to talk a little bit about what serverless is. Now, serverless is really an evolution in how we build our applications. You see, we used to build these huge monolithic applications that were very hard to deploy they're very slow to test. And Docker helped us break those down into microservices. Really, functions are the next step in that evolution. Now, serverless is also a bit of a misnomer. What it means is that we've got this new architectural pattern, a new way of designing systems. And it lets us focus on writing small, reusable chunks of code that are easy to deploy, and we kind of forget about them. One of the key use cases for serverless functions is building integrations between existing services, um, something such as GitHub, PayPal, maybe even Slack. Now, they don't replace microservices. Actually, they work best alongside our existing code. Example might be your database, maybe your object storage. Here's a prime example of serverless in the industry. Amazon put together the Echo Dot, which is over on the stage just there. But how it works is you talk to it, your voice is uploaded to the cloud, it figures out what you wanted, and then a tiny function just knows how to do one thing, figures out what to say, and that comes back to you. So they've built a back end for serverless, and it's a really good implementation. You write your code once as a zip file in Node.js or whatever language they support and upload it. Amazon will then handle the billing and the lifecycle of that function. You don't really have to think about the service anymore. Now, with FAS, you can actually swap out that Lambda function completely, and it will work exactly the same. But why does that matter? Well you should be able to write code in whatever language you need to. Choose whatever platform you want, and run it forever longer is necessary. OK? And with some infrastructure providers, it's just not possible. With FAS, it is today. Let's have a quick look at how the Echo works. Alexa, what's the weather in Austin? In Austin, United States, it's 82 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, you can look for lots of clouds with showers, with a low of 68 degrees. OK. Um, let's have a look at the stack. If we can get the other screens up again, that would be great. Um, so FAS is a Golang project. It uses Docker's API, and it's open source. We have the API gateway, which is key. All traffic comes through the API gateway, and that would be exposed on your network or the internet. Every function that you build gets its own unique URL, and then you can go and post that into a service. Any 
container and any process can become a function, can become a serverless function by use of the function watchdog. Now, the way that works is through Unix pipes. So you take your function, you take your container, you embed the watchdog, then it will orchestrate. So it will read the web request, put it into the application through standard in. You do what you need to do and print to the console, and then that goes back. And it's seamless. So you can actually take one of the oldest utilities that exists, cat, and you can make an echo service just by putting the watchdog in a container. Underpinning that is Docker's flexible image format. And then Swarm gives us so many rich orchestration features like stacks, secret management, and self-healing infrastructure. So we can just leverage multiple hosts. Prometheus gives us metrics, and that allows us to then scale the application up as we need to. I just want to show you that really quick. It's going to take about 60 seconds over here. So this is the test drive page on my GitHub repository. And there's a one-line command that will deploy the whole of FAS, including a bunch of sample functions. They've already been pulled from the Docker Hub. And I'm now going to open that in a new tab. Then the left-hand side of the screen, you can see all the functions that were present in the sample stack, including one of my favorites, which is the markdown function. Now, if you've ever worked on an open source project, you've probably written some markdown. And we can use that to format text, create HTML. There we go. We can click Invoke as many times as we want, and we get the function count. If you have your own function, you can now define it with this pop-up and type in the details. And it was that quick, less than 60 seconds. Now, it's kind of important when you're dealing with confidential data to be able to run your application where that data lives. And sometimes you need to run your code on servers that have been already certified. A really good example of that would be payroll. So who likes to get paid here? Yeah, me too. Um, Gordon's actually been doing a bit of moonlighting for me on Twitter. This is Docker's mascot. And I think he deserves a cash bonus. So let's try something out. First of all, I'll find out how much my payroll is going to cost. Alexa, ask my assistant how much my payroll will cost. Your payroll will cost $105 for this period. So I think I probably have some spare cash. Alexa, award a bonus. Hmm, I can't find the answer to the question I heard. Alexa, ask my assistant to award a bonus to Gordon. Alexa, ask my assistant give a bonus to Gordon. Sorry, I didn't understand the question I heard. Hang on, I don't think this is quite close enough. Alexa, pay a bonus to Gordon. Pay them how much bonus? $1,000. Let me process that for you now. Your payroll will cost an additional $1,000. OK, and let's just check that worked. Your Alexa, payroll how? Payroll will cost $1,105 for this period. So what happened there? Well, there were two serverless functions, and they were both written in Node.js. The first one called My Assistant updated the bonus amount in a Minio database. Now, I use that because it allows us to be portable with our storage, so we can move that to any cloud. The second skill was the payroll engine, and that just added up the numbers that we'd already stored. One key property of serverless functions is the ability to be able to scale for demand when it's required. Now, my boss has actually asked me to mirror a bunch of files from the west coast to the east coast. But there's one more thing he's asked me to do. Let's just kick this off. He 
He's asked me to get an audit trail, and I need to know every file that's been transmitted. Turns out I was able to create a function and update the, the S3 server and tell it to fire a webhook to FAS, to functions as a service, for every file that was copied. And we'll probably be able to see a few of those files have already gone across. So on the left-hand side of the screen, we have the function rate, which is already over 100. And in a couple of seconds, in the replica scaling graph on the right-hand side, we'll see those replicas go from 1 to 5. And that's the auto-scaling kicking in. So Docker's API enabled us to automatically scale that. Now, it turns out that once that pressure is relieved, that it will then drop back to one replica, as you can see there. So I think we should have a bit of fun with the Moby Mingle data feed. I actually created a Golang Alexa skill earlier. So let's ask a couple of questions. Alexa, how many Mingles have we had? We've had a total of 482 Mingles so far. Yeah. yeah. It's loads. It's, it's really great. Alexa, what were the most popular keywords? The most popular keywords were Docker and Docker. <laughs> so there's really no surprises there. No surprises. So with FAS, you're able to very quickly, in 60 seconds, get up an API gateway, deploy a function, and start interacting and integrating with services. And you only use the resources that you need. So let's try a quick experiment now. Can you all get your phones out or your laptops, everyone? And head over to getfaz.com. That's a short URL to GitHub. And I want you to put a star on the repository. If you're on the live stream, <laughs> please do this too. <laughs> if you've already done it, thank you. But just take it off and put it back on again, and I'll show you why. So this is your chance to be on the big screen. Just hit the star, and you'll appear here. So look at all those wonderful faces. Look at them rolling in. So what happened? How did that work? Well, earlier I went to GitHub under the webhook setting, and I put in the public URL of my FAS server that I've deployed through a Docker stack. GitHub as you clicked that button, then sent an event to my fan club function. So you're now in my fan club. <laughs> that JSON was parsed and sent to a get avatar function, which downloaded the binary bytes, returned the response, and we stored that in a mini OS3 bucket. And I'm actually mirroring that to my screen right now. That's what we're seeing. So there's still a few pictures dropping in there. So that concludes my tour of FAS, but it doesn't end there. I want you to get in touch on Twitter and on GitHub and help shape what FAS becomes. Raise issues on GitHub. Tell me your requirements. Tell me what you want to do with serverless, and we'll shape this project. So thank you very much for listening. It will work. Thank you, Alex. Huh? Huh? Oh, there I am. Thank you, Alex. Let's give one more round of applause for our cool hacks winners. <laughs> one of the things that I love about uh, both these cool hacks is that they're open source. And Docker loves giving back to the community through open source, as you know. But now we wanted to thank you for helping us give to the local community here in Austin. So thank you very much for participating in DockerCon Gives Back. Every year, there's a ton of great sessions at DockerCon. And every year, somebody says to me, 
I can't choose between these two sessions because I'm, I'm going to miss this amazing session that I need to see. So we have a third day. We have tomorrow. We decided to repeat the top eight sessions that you voted on in the DockerCon app. So tomorrow, you can, uh, you can see them. And we would like to invite all of the speakers for these repeated sessions to receive a top speaker award. One per group of people. Oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very mad I've got check records now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sorry. You're welcome. OK. One per group. OK. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. All right, thank you. Uh, so you can find the times and locations for those repeat sessions on the DockerCon on the DockerCon app. But if you still do miss some content.